All right, hello all you crazy people out there, this is Dragonite, and welcome back to using Model Creator for Game Maker. In the last video I did on this, I talked about using and manipulating basic shapes, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how to use textures effectively. So I believe in the beginning of the last video, I showed off part of a project I was working on in the form of a clock tower with hands and stuff, and in this part, I am going to be creating a replica of that clock tower, not the whole thing because it took quite a long time to make actually, uh, but a replica of that clock tower, and I'm going to be uh, using textures to make it look pretty and stuff like that. So let's start out by just making a basic tower. Let's go from not there. We're going to go from, again, 0, 0 to 32, 32. And how about, let's make the top at 64. Okay. And I'm going to turn off shading, uh, lighting rather, on both of these views just to make it a little bit easier to see. And I'm going to enable... Uh, showing the edges so that I can see exactly where everything is and Let's see. Let's convert this to triangles, which is uh, all good And I'm going to go and load a texture from a file and I can find this texture Wherever you want on this computer wherever you want on your computer rather It's going to ask you to load the alpha channel and I'm going to say yes That's just whether or not transparency is shown Make sure you have other textures selected in this texture settings Okay, and this looks very, very weird. So to start with, um, I'm going to go into this text texture um, view, and you can see there's the picture. Uh, I should probably show off this is not the picture. Don't mind me. This is what my texture file looks like in this ancient history version of uh, Photoshop. There's a clock face with a Pokeball in it because, of course, uh, there is a brick wall, and there is a roof, and there are some hands. And that is being shown over here in the texture view. And if I want to have, for example, this tower part only display the brick wall, I can click and drag the edges of the texture and have it so that it only encompasses the brick wall. If, for example, you wanted the top uh, face to show the Pokeball clock face, you could select the top and move those vertices in the texture editor, the UV coordinates, over to the clock face. I'm not going to do that though. I am going to actually make a copy of this and I'm going to let's see if I can find it. Move it down. How about here? 32, so it's a perfect square. And this I'm going to move over here to show the clock face. So this is a tower, and this is a, a fancy looking circle with Roman numerals on it. Alright, let's just move that a little bit closer. Next, the roof. Uh, to make the roof I'm going to do something very similar, and I'm going to select the top, copy it, and move it over here. Let's see and let's make it go about to here, I think, 80, and 64, and again, once again, I can copy this and move the edges of the shape so that it looks like uh, two playing cards next to each other, really, and I'm actually going to get rid of this top face now because I don't need it, it's going to be invisible in a minute anyway. So let's just go select the roof, move it back over to, um, move it back over to the top of the clock, make sure it's nice and centered, go back to the texture view. I'm going to go and move this to an angle so that you can actually see what it looks like and just play with the texture coordinates until they are what I want. Now this is rotated sideways for whatever reason. Um, because of the way that it depends on the order that the triangles are created, the way the textures are oriented on the triangles depends on, wh on the, uh, the way the triangles are created, the order that the points are created. So if you rotate one, um, if you rotate a triangle maybe, or if you, uh, if you rotate a texture selection on accident, you might end up with something like I had before where they were sideways, or you might end up with something like this where one of them is upside down. 
So let me just go and select this part of the roof and invert these coordinates. Okay. That looks a little bit better. Not bad for a, uh, really like a five minute job. Now I would like one more um, triangle and that can function as the, uh, the face for this, the part of the clock. So I'm going to go back to not the top, but how about the front? And I'm going to copy this triangle and I'm going to fit it over this gaping hole in the roof as so that um, maybe rain and birds and stuff don't get in by accident. Okay, and you may notice that looks a little bit weird. If your standards are low, that might be okay, but if your standards are not like rock bottom, you probably want to change the texture mapping on this part of the, uh, the roof also. And again, to do that, you can just play around with the texture coordinates until you get something that you like. I'm going to try and, let's see, that is again rotated. So I would like to rotate these triangles or rotate this uh, specific triangle, because there's only only one of them, and see if I can get, there we go. The texture on the top triangle is now oriented the same way as the texture on the bottom. The scaling is a little bit off, but that is a relatively easy fix. Um, see, that's a little bit too small now. I need to zoom in so that I can actually see the numbers. There is a dog behind me, please ignore. And there we go. And now if I were to turn the, uh, the, uh, the edges off so that you can't see the edges, it looks like this triangle on the top and these two triangles down here on the tower are continuous. And to get this on the back, all I need to do is, let's go object select, copy this, and let's move it to the back. And because of the way that I didn't move it to the back, I didn't copy it rather, I want to copy it. There we go. And because of the way that the, uh, the vertices in the triangle are defined, it's flipped over so that you can see, you can see that it's invisible from one angle, from one direction. And to make that visible, I can just go down here and use the flip faces tool. And now it's pointing outward. The reason that, um, the reason that you can only see the triangles from one direction is because back face culling and that's a whole story of its own, and I'll probably make an entire video dedicated to optimization in GameMakers 3D and talk about back face culling and things like that as well. But for now, there's this tower, it has a clock face. All right, that is texture mapping in Model Creator. Since I need to have something available for download in the description of this video, I'm going to leave the uh, this model file as I did last time. If you want me to assign you a little bit of homework, you can go and add the, uh, the hands on the clock too, because I did include that in the texture uh, file but I haven't used them for anything. Honestly, if you're making a game and you're drawing a clock tower, you probably will want to do the hands through code so that they can display the correct time and stuff like that. But it's good practice so that you can get a grip on how manipulating texture coordinates work. If you're not familiar with 3D modeling, it can take a little bit of time to wrap your brain around, but don't worry, once you get used to it, you'll be used to it. Anyway, I hope you all found that useful. My name is Dragonite and I will see you all later.